<laughs> Good evening. Welcome to episode 85 of Wise Advice. Uh, give you a second to get caught up, get get checked in. That's how we do it. We uh, answer any questions you have ahead of the show. We're going to continue a little bit of what we did on episode 84. We'll continue a little bit tonight. Uh, Susan's first in, checking in. Woohoo. David, number two, out of the gate. And number three is... Don't know yet. Susan, oh uh, yeah, Susan says she beat Jeff. That is correct. And I can't believe, and Jeff's going to be on the show tonight. And so if Jeff doesn't show up, that'll be so, there he is. Shelly, good evening. Uh, Amy, hello. Anyway, as I was saying, to give you a second to get, get in here, get settled, we will, um, I will uh, we'll continue the episode from last night just a little bit, uh, answer any questions ahead of the show, and then after the show, I'll come back and answer anything or clarify anything that we didn't talk about uh, to get you here. So a lot of you pumping in Hershey, uh, Iowa, Her what, Nebraska, right? Hershey, Nebraska. I forget where the other Hershey was. Let's see who else popped in. All kinds of pop. Amy popped in. Monica popped in. Good evening. LR. Hello, Kirby. Dude, what's going on? Angie's in. Jennifer's in. Diane's in. Jeanette. We said Jeanette. Uh, Iris made it live. I'm a little early tonight. Uh, the regulars will know that I'm a little early. I think I'm competing with Game of Thrones. Is that the case? Uh, hopefully that doesn't send you guys all off running. I've never watched it. I don't even have a television. So, well, I have a television. We don't have cable, so I don't watch TV. Uh, Cindy's in. Hello. Paula is in. Sheila, hello. Uh, May says, what does my shirt? Oh, my shirt is, uh, says, it's backwards. Can you read it? So it's uh, Transformation Education. I got this from uh, the gym down in Bloomington that I worked out at last weekend. Um, Adam gave me this lovely shirt and said, hey, wear it. And I, it's, um, I'm probably doing a terrible job of plugging it because I don't know what the back says. But uh, that's Adam's deal down in uh, Bloomington. He's got a beautiful facility down there. I think... Um, I think you'll hear some more from him and I because I, I, mean, I had a great time working out. He wants to do some stuff with the show. We got some neat little plans. Um, but to be honest with you, I've just been so busy. I haven't had a chance to kind of dig into the emails to see what him and I are kind of going to collaborate on. So anyway, this is his shirt, so I'm wearing it for him. Actually, I just happened to put it on because it's weird now. I like shirts that fit tighter. I'm sorry, but I like them that they're a little more snug. And so this is a, a schmedium, they call it. So a couple of the shirts I have upstairs are a little bit bigger. So I put this on tonight when we went to dinner because I just liked it. I liked how it fit. Um, Katie's in. Hello. Anne is, is in. Jenny, how are you? See you tomorrow night, right? Very cool. Uh, and so, yeah, I was right with Nebraska. Vanessa's here. Nashville. Robin's here. Kim is in. Ginger from Dallas. Good to see you. Dallas repping. Going to the Big D. Don't mean diet, right? Got it. Teresa's in. Um, let's see. Donna, then you're in. This is the this is the show to plug into. 84 was good. 85 will be good. Uh, I think. You know, hope is here. Ah, gotcha. So Amy says game. Of, see, I don't even. I don't, I don't know anything about television. Um, I truly. We have Ace TV. I don't watch TV. Um, <laughs> Kirby wrote it wrote whatever my shirt says backwards. Good job, Kirby. Oh, you're funny. Christine is here. Andrea's here. Um yeah, Kirby, I'm I'm gonna put you on ignore. Uh yeah, Susan, I, I mean it's my new favorite shirt size is the Schmedium. You know, it's funny, I was thinking as we went to dinner tonight, um my thought was, am I that guy now? Am I that guy that wears the shirt that's too small, um, you know, that I used to make fun of? And so what's fun now is now uh, when I wear a shirt and it's too tight, it's too tight in through here, but it fits really good down here. So um, I don't know. It's just it's the look I like now. But I used to make fun of that guy when he wore the shirt that was too small. He'd say, dude, buy, you know, quit wearing your kid's shirt. Buy your own, buy your own shirt. But... My issue is all my shirts always were loose up here and tight down here. I don't have that anymore. Now it's just the opposite. It's tight up and through here, and it fits good, and I, I like it a lot better. So, so Schmedium it is. Um, 
So, Hope, tonight's going to be a continuation of last night's show. Uh, yeah, Jeff, I'll be – no. Jeff, the next Aminja, nin, American Ninja Warrior people, those guys are crazy fit. I'm just getting in shape. There's a huge difference between – you know, I started watching some fitness videos today just for fun on uh, Instagram, and there were some guys doing, like, crazy planks with, like, one arm with 135 pounds on their back and – I don't know, just there are some insane guys and gals on the planet doing some amazing stuff in fitness. Uh, I'm headed in that direction, and we'll see where life goes. So, yeah, Kirby, I apologize. Kirby, Kirby, I'm so sorry. Um, so, uh, RSLE is here again. Uh, I'm going to mess this up. Yvette from Idaho. Alicia's here. Diane is here. Uh, Aaron, so glad to have you as part of this community. You're going to like, um, I think it's, hang on, Aaron, you're going to like, um, oh, it is Jeff, Jeff, you're first. You're going to like, like the commentary we have for Jeff's email. So, um, yeah, isn't that fun, Katie? I mean, I'm, again, I'm the guy that I used to make fun of now, you know, I used to make fun of that guy and now I'm, I'm him. And so I'm okay with it. Um, yeah, I am early, Paula. Yeah, mute the Red Sox. You can watch the Red Sox still play. They'll still win. Uh, you can listen here. So Denise says hi. Let's see. Susan, you remember my first, you remember the really, really first medium I got? I'm trying to think of which one it was. It was the Chick-fil-A shirt, I think, wasn't it? I think that's what it was. I'm pretty sure that's the first medium I bought. Uh, and then one of my um, one of one of the members from Connect, I'm not gonna throw them out, but one of the members from Connect brought me a medium Butler shirt. So, hey, hey Denise, very cool. Yeah, I saw that on Connect that your his first day was today. Um, yeah, did you see Andrew? I mean, people do some crazy stuff with planking. I, I'm lucky to get a three minute plank in, um, but yeah. Cool. I'm glad uh, Glad you guys like the videos. Uh, Marie, hello from New Hampshire. So, uh, Marie, you know I'm from, or not from, I lived in New Hampshire for a long time, right? Did you know that? Or I actually lived in Maine, to be technical. But I lived in South Berwick, Maine, uh, just across the border in Dover. Dover, uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire area. Uh, lived there for a long time, so very cool. <laughs> Kirby, I hope to always be the guy that you make fun of. You know why? Uh, if that's what it takes to keep you engaged in the process and that's what it takes to get you to goal, then you can make fun of me all you want. I want you to continue checking in to make fun of me for the rest of your life so that you never give up on your goal. You have that reason. If that's the reason you make goal, completely fine with that. Yep. So no, Well, Susan's, um, Susan, the marathon shirt was a small yeah, so you're referring to when I went to um, North Carolina to run the marathon, I, I asked for a medium shirt because I was in mediums at that point, and um, I get to the race day or the day before I used to pick up my packet, and I checked in. She goes, oh, we're all out of mediums. Here's a large. And I went, oh, no, I don't wear large T-shirts anymore. And she goes, well, it's all we have. And she goes, I said, but I asked for a medium. And I was very nice about it, you know. And uh, she goes, well, we have a small. I'm like, bring it. I'll take a small. So I went into the restroom, put on the small, and it and it fit. And I still wear it to this day. So, so I have a I have one or two small T-shirts that I can wear. It all depends on the manufacturer. Most of the time, I'm in a sh I'm in a sh medium, uh, and that's the that's the favorite. So, very cool. Um, all right, let's see. So Mud started doing push-ups. Good, 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 good. Uh, I don't think I'm planking tonight, but we'll see. Angela from Indiana. I'm from Indiana. Very nice. Um, let's see. Christine lived in Augusta, Maine for a year. So, Christine, I actually lived in Litchfield for a long time uh, near Gardner. You know where that is, I'm sure. I lived there for a very long time. Um, large personality, though. Cool. Look at this. I don't know, um, yeah, it's a manufacturer's fault, manufacturer's fault. Um, 
let's half a marathon together. I'm in. Yeah, let's do, uh, you know, I don't do long. I'm not gonna do much long runs anymore. I don't think. Um, David bought a first small. You are a small David too. So, all right, um, let's get this thing going, shall we? Uh, from Nashua, yeah. So Nashua is out of the way com- from compared to Portsmouth, New Hampshire. That's where I was. Um, well, good job on the running piece. So a little bit of this. Long is a 50K. Yeah, I'm not doing a 50K. Not doing a 50K. Testing one, two. Test, 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 test. Testing one, two, testing one, two, three. So it was really weird. Last night I got the show done and the audio back there, I record from this microphone into that computer. uh, And last night it recorded it and it jumbled the audio all up and it was completely unusable. So I had to use this microphone, uh, which records into Facebook. And that was the audio from the show last night. And uh, so if you notice, it probably was a little bit different. I didn't care for the audio of the of the show 40, um, 85. But anyway, so. Um, so, yeah, so let me go back to real quick. Katie's asking a question before we get started. Casey, are you still planning on doing the episodes where you interview someone who has been successful? Yes. Um, but here is the issue with that, Katie. Uh, that requires planning. And I don't plan very well. Um, if that person called me right now, I would do it right now. Uh, but I, if I have to go, you know, two days from now, say, hey, how about this weekend at 8 p.m.? We, you know, I just I, I'm not good at that in my um, in, in my evening hours. I mean, you know, during the day I, I can commit to it because of work. But so to set a schedule outside of work uh, that I can adhere to is the hardest part of this. And so. And then you're trying to get, you know, so many people and I anticipate that'll take about an hour at least to get that uh, recorded. So um, it's, it's absolutely, and I want to use that for my weekend episodes, you know, and, and get them recorded ahead of time so that I don't have to record on the weekends. And so it is absolutely still a plan. It's just a matter of uh, trying to get the timing coordinated, which is not exactly easy. All right, we're we're recording in the back. Audio looks good. You ready? I always gotta catch my breath. I should probably go to page one. That'll make it easier. All right. I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com. Follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're at a point... Stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, that's right. I absolutely believe in you. You have the ability to get this done. We talked yesterday on episode 84 about how you can get this done. Welcome to episode 85 of Wise Advice. And uh, here, here's got a, here, I got some interesting stuff for you today. I, as you know, if you follow along on, on Facebook and or connect or depending on where you're following me from, uh, even I think I put it on Instagram as well. I went for a run today. I got my PT test coming up and by the end of August, I have to complete my test. 
So it's roughly 43 days or so from now. I have to complete a PT test. Uh, a goal of mine, besides for, you know, for forever, my goal has been to pass this test. I'm confident now that I could pass this test 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't matter. You tell me when to go. I can run in the clothes that I'm wearing when you ask, and I can go pass the test. I'm even confident that I can get an excellent score on the test no matter what. But I want to get 100 on this test. 100 means I got to run a mile and a half in 9 minutes, 45 seconds. But just before that, I have to do about roughly 50 push-ups. I have to do roughly 60 sit-ups. Uh, and all of that combined, you know, gives me a score of 100. Now, I can do the push-ups independently. I can do the sit-ups independently. Uh, and I went for a run today, and I decided to push a little harder than normal to see kind of where I would fall on the range. So after a mile and a half run, uh, the first mile, I, you know, I, I took off really fast. Uh, and I got into the point of it where I was running about maybe like a 630 mi mile or so. And then um, the first mile was good, and I just kind of ran out of steam. So I ended up with a 713 pace for a mile and a half of 11 minutes, which was a dang good run. I would have taken that any point in my career for sure. But it's, it's certainly, you know, a minute and 15 seconds off of the pace of 945 that I need to complete. So it got me, put me in this, this thought where I'm like, do I really want this 100? Do I need to get 100 on this PT? What does getting 100 on this test prove to me? And, and I got through, you know, and I, I admitted it on Connect that I'm in a complacency mode right now. I'm very happy with my fitness level. Everything I've wanted to accomplish with my weight loss and with my fitness I've accomplished, with the exception of this getting 100. And, and I started to evaluate, do I actually want 100 on this PT test? And, you know, the work that I'm going to have to put in over the next 43 days to bring my mile and a half time down from 11 minutes down to 9 minutes and 45 seconds it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of focus. It's going to be a lot of discipline. I think along the way, I'm going to want to try and try and see if I can really uh, tone down a little bit. You know, if I can drop 10 pounds, which I don't want to, but if I can drop about 10 pounds, that helps speed up the run time as well, as long as I keep the muscle going. So, so for me now to transition from this 11 minute mile and a half to a 945 is going to take some work. I'll admit it, it's hard, and I actually don't even think I can do it. And, um, and so it got me thinking, and, um, and it got you thinking as well, because when I put that on Connect, the, the responses, and the put it on, on Facebook, the responses that I got were pretty interesting. And so I want to ask you this question. I want to say, what is it that you're thinking right now as you heard me explain that? As you heard me abandon my idea of a goal of getting 100 on my PT test, a goal that I've wanted for as long as I can remember. I've kind of given up on that. And so, you know, I, if, if I don't get 100, if I get a 98, that's still pretty dang good, right? A 98 on, on my fitness test, I mean, I was getting 40s before. And so I'm getting a 98, which is phenomenal. So, so I ask you, what is it that you think when I say that? And if you look at the posts that I put out, every single one of you said, we believe in you. You can do it. If you want it, go get it. Go get it. Go after it. I believe you can do it. It takes focus. It takes discipline. That's all the same stuff I've been telling you about your weight loss journey. You're in a complacency mindset. You're in a complacency trap. And just like me, you're willing to give up on that goal of hitting goal because you feel good, because you look good. And right now, you're like, do I want to put in that little bit more extra effort to get to goal? And that's exactly where I'm at. So I'm going to push forward. I'm going to give it my best. Because it's a goal that I've wanted for a long time, and I'm going to go get it. You know, I'm going to see what happens. And it, but when I get to that point where I take that test, here's what I'm going to do. The day that I take that test, if I don't get 100, I will immediately schedule another test. And I will request another test, you know, at the next interval possible, which will be in, in a couple weeks. And I will go, and I will go, and I will go until I get it or die trying. Because it's that important to me. And it's not about the number. It's not about the whether or not I can do it or not. It's about a feeling. It's a feeling for me to say that forever this thing has eluded me. Forever this thing has been on the back of my journey saying, you know what, 100 on a PT test, that's, that's incredible work. That's hard work. No one does that. Well, that's right. No one loses 141 pounds and maintains it. Well, I, well, I got some news for you. A lot of people do. 
And so that's where my my sights are set. And that's where I want you to understand if you if you are thinking as I was talking the story that, man, I don't want to see him give up. Man, I want to see him get it. Man, I, I believe in him. If you are thinking all those things, why aren't you thinking them about your own journey? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? Go get it done. You know, you absolutely can get it done. Speaking of get it done, out of the gate, Jeff writes in out of Fargo, North Dakota. Jeff says, hello, Fat Dag. This is Jeff from Fargo, North Dakota. Just wanted to write to say that Weight Watchers has given me a second chance to live the life that I've always wanted. That up until now, I did not even think was possible. A year and a half ago, I was 294 pounds and depressed, eating at fast food places almost every night. And then later on in the evening, I would go to the gas station and get four or five candy bars, a bag of chips, beef jerky, with a 64-ounce bottle of brisk tea. This would have continued. Uh, I would have very easily been over 350 pounds in the weeks to come. On January 24th, 2016, I made the decision to change my life for the better. I remember walking into Weight Watchers for the first time. I remember sitting down after I completed the monthly pass and thinking to myself, is this program actually going to work? And will I actually be able to stick with it? Fast forward a year and a half later, and I'm happy to say I've reached the top of the mountain in a sense. I reached lifetime. I actually did it. It took focus, faith in the program, and determination to get it done. But I made it happen, which means everyone out there who is on Weight Watchers can accomplish it as well. I am so happy with how I feel and what I can do now that I could not have done a year and a half ago. Thank you, Mike, for this amazing podcast. You are, an ins you are inspiring so many people. I am so glad you take the time every day to give us all a forum to tell our stories. For me, it has been so healing to tell mine. Keep up the good fight, everyone. Thanks, Jeff, out of North Dakota. Uh, Jeff, dude, as you know, um, I am beyond proud of you. Uh, they, I, I, I have a couple things in your email that I circled and, and wrote notes on, and I want to I kind of go through them in order. Um, I applaud you for, for saying uh, you wanted to write and say that Weight Watchers has given you a second chance, and that, that's not exactly true. Weight Watchers gave you some tools. You gave yourself a second chance by using the tools that are available. There is no single way to do this program. There are a, as many ways to lose weight as there are pounds to lose. But the fact that you understood that if this was your destiny, you said in yourself, on January 24th, 2016, I made the decision. You made the decision to use some tools and stick with it. So uh, the fact that, um, that you were sat in there and you, you sat in the room saying to yourself, uh, will this program actually work? Will I be able to stick with it? You know, that's extremely powerful for you to share that, Jeff, because what happens is all of us have that thought. When we walk into that meeting room, we're at the exact same place you are. We, we don't walk in because we were looking for something fun to do that evening. No one walks into the Weight Watchers meeting looking for a party. You know, as a leader, I watch some people come into the meeting room. And the first thing I want to do is I want to run up and give them a big hug and welcome them because I know where they're at. They're depressed just like you are uh, or were, absolutely were. Uh, and, and they're at the point where they're like, I don't know if this will work, but I'm willing to try anything, which is exactly what you did. So the fact that you now, Jeff, have taken a moment to write down your story and share it, that right there will reach somebody else who says, you know what, this guy did it. And if this guy did it, then I can do it. And that's exactly what you said as you end your email, that, you know, that, every, that if you can do it, anyone can do it, which is why I always say, I believe in you. I believe in you because I did something that I didn't think was possible. And I'm not special by any stretch of the imagination. I'm a regular guy that works, you know, I have, a, I have a family, I have a house, I have jobs. I'm busy. You're busy. But we found a way to prioritize ourselves in this life, make the changes that were necessary, and it's an amazing feeling to reach lifetime. And I know you know that. When you hop on the scale and you like the way you look, you like the way you feel, you like what you did, man, it, it's, it's absolutely 
an amazing feeling. So this is absolutely 100% possible. Congratulations on uh, reaching a lifetime. You know, it's, it's hard work. Most of us, just like me wanting to give up on my PT test, most of us give up before we get there. We stop short. We let complacency take over. But Jeff, you did not do that. You stayed focused all the way to the end. And your prize now is you get to live the rest of your life at a weight and a life that you're happy with. And the journey starts today. So Jeff, thank you for your email, man. Again, it is a complete honor to, you know, I see you on my Facebook every night we pop in. Um, and it just, you know, usually you're the first one in the forum. That's a testament to your dedication and your focus. And, uh, you know, it, it reinforces to me that you will be uh, rocking this for a long time, inspiring people all over the world. So in the show notes, I'll put a link to Jeff's name on, uh, to his username in the Weight Watcher form, Connect. So you can go ahead and connect with Jeff out there as well. Next up is uh, Lindsay out of Utah. Lindsay writes, says, hi, Dag. I love the podcast, and I've been listening since the beginning. The other day, you asked for some lifetime members to email in, so here is my story. I wasn't really a chubby kid, but I come from a family of big eaters. I went on my first diet at about age 13. I lost weight, and I got a lot of good attention for it. I was a pretty active kid, but, but looking back, I think I probably overeaten my whole life. In my early 20s, I became a runner. In parts that I could eat whatever I wanted, I had my ups and my downs, but basically I maintained through exercise. I had a roommate who did Weight Watchers, and I thought it was absolutely crazy to pay someone to tell you how to eat. A few years passed, and I found myself a few pounds over where I wanted to be with some really bad eating habits. I joined, and I really liked the way the program helped me control the portions and balance my, uh, balance my diet. I made lifetime pretty quickly. In the intervening years, I have been up and down, running many marathons, completed an Ironman, and struggled with food the entire time. I'm back at a lifetime goal now, but I think this time I'm really getting it. It is truly a lifetime journey. In my head, I have separated activity and the food. Now, no matter what my activity level, I track and I go for the blue dots. This has helped me lose 10 pounds since the end of February. The other day, I went to a cardio bar class, which was way out of my comfort zone. There is a reason my ballet career ended at age five. Anyway, I did the class, and I'm happy to say that I liked how I looked in the mirror. I go way in almost every week, and I stay for the meeting if I can. The program helps me identify bad habits and what I can do to avoid getting into situations where I throw caution to the wind. I would tell anyone who is just starting to stick with it, find foods that you like to eat that help you stay on the program, and realize that you are going to have to change some habits if you want to have long-lasting results. Above all, be patient. It's not called lifetime for anything. So that, uh, that email right there, actually it's not from Lindsay, I apologize, I, I, I forgot the name, but I'll, I'll put that in the show notes, and, uh, but we'll go through it, that, that's unfortunate there. Uh, but, but the email nonetheless is absolutely incredible. So uh, to say that you, you liked the way you looked in the mirror, uh, it, which means you absolutely hit your goal. If you walk into a mirror and you see a reflection and you like that reflection, you're at goal. doesn't matter what the number is on the scale. So uh, when you talked about being a kid early on and you said you were a pretty active kid, but looking back, you think you maybe you've been overeating your entire life. That's exactly it. Overeating, for many of us, is a learned and or trained behavior. Think about it. You know, if you look at sometimes, often we can get some of our best advice from some of the youngest people on the planet. You know, there, there will be kids all over the place. You hand them a donut, they'll eat the entire thing, and they'll leave just a tiny little bite on the plate, and you ask them, well, you want, no, I'm full. And they'll leave a bite or two on a plate. And we as adults say, well, you need to finish your plate. You know, you, or, or what we'll do is we'll reach over and grab it and, and finish the plate for them, which emphasizes to them that they should have left the plate empty. But they stopped eating because they were done eating. And so... That's a trained behavior and that's a learned behavior that, uh, that we have to overcome as adults. So the meetings absolutely teach us that. The meeting room, you know, I know there are many successful people who've done this entire thing online. There are many people who've lost weight without Weight Watchers. So, so it's not the meeting isn't the magic sauce 100%, but for me it was. And for many it is as well. The meeting room, just as you say, 
The meeting room is a chance for me to sit there and kind of evaluate what's coming up this week, what's coming up in the next couple of weeks, and how do I how do I handle them? How do I prepare for them? Uh, there are situations where I just you know usually just kind of take what I get when they show up, but now the meeting room gives me an opportunity to kind of take one second and go, you know what, I need to change some habits. I need to change some behavior. And I do want to stay at lifetime because lifetime for me feels so different. It feels so incredible. I am never, ever giving it back. So absolutely be patient. You have the rest of your life to do this. You can get it done. Thank you. Now, now we will get to Lindsay's email out of Utah. And Lindsay says, hi, Mike. Uh, thank you for taking the time to do this podcast. I've been listening for a few weeks and I'm working my way through the new and the old episodes. You say quite a bit that stepping on the scale for the last time in a weight loss mode is the best feeling. Well, when I was listening to episode 84, Goal Call, I actually had excitement, the excitement butterflies thinking about stepping on that scale for the last time. I felt like I was a kid on Christmas Eve. I can't remember the last time I was that excited about something in my life. I've hit my 10% and I'm looking forward to stepping on the scale for the very last time in a weight loss mode. Thanks again, Lindsay. Well, Lindsay, absolutely. Uh, that is what I'm trying to convey. More than anything is, is when you reach goal, when you reach lifetime, there is no comparison. It doesn't matter how wonderful your life was leading up to it. Something significant happens when you love the reflection you see in the mirror, when you love stepping on a scale and not wanting it to be any lower. You're well on your way. 10% is a significant accomplishment in your weight loss journey. At 10%, you've now demonstrated to yourself and to the world that, that we've given you a plan. You understood the plan. You've accepted the plan as part of your life. You've followed the plan. You've had some ups and some downs during the plan, but all along, You've continued working the plan, and you have hit a significant milestone along the plan. At this point, we don't give you new tools. We don't give you anything new. Nothing at all changes in the program for you. Not a single thing. So if you've hit 10%, continue doing what you're doing, and you can hit goal. You've proven you know how to do it. You've proven that you know how to do this. I want you to get it done. Congratulations on 10%. That's a significant deal. You ought to be super proud of yourself. And now imagine how proud you are right now. Times that times 100. That's what it feels like to get to goal. When you get there, let me know. Out of New London, New Hampshire, Julie writes in and says, I have recently discovered your podcast, and I'm finding myself starting every day with listening to your advice and your wisdom. I, like many others, am starting Weight Watchers for the fifth time. I'm still not sure if it's my last time yet. This is the fundamental part of my question. What advice do you have for people that continue to quit and restart to stop this pattern? Logically, I understand how to eat. I could probably teach someone how to eat better, but I'm having trouble applying it to my own life. This seems to be a pattern of mine. I become knowledgeable about a subject and I logically connect to it, but putting it into action into my own life is non-existent. Any advice or words of wisdom you can share, Julie out of, again, New London, New Hampshire. Julie, the absolute best, I can, best advice I can ever give you on this plan. Uh, as you know, it took me five times as well to get to goal. And that's five times of actually starting in the meeting room. I, I don't even know how many times I attempted to do it online. Uh, it's significantly more than that. I walked into a meeting room five specific times to five different leaders saying, help me, I want to start over. Um, the best advice I can give you is don't stop. Absolutely don't stop. Every time I stopped Weight Watchers, I, I had to rejoin at a higher weight. The reason I walked into the meeting room had never changed. It was the same reason every single time. So every time I walked in, that reason was the same, except for my starting weight every single time was higher. All stopping does is gives you a new start date. So first of all, number one, don't stop. Now, now we, you're right. It, it's extremely easy, right? And, and I say that jokingly. Losing weight is very easy on paper. 
Losing weight as a formula, losing weight as a plan is beyond simple. Losing weight integrated into our lives, not so much. So eat less calories, burn more calories, eat, you know, um, eat less calories than you burn and you'll lose weight. It's beyond simple. Now that doesn't say, what about, hey, there's a wedding coming up. Hey, there's a birthday party coming up. Hey, it's 4th of July. Hey, it's Thanksgiving. All those things don't really kind of enter in on the paper in the plan. So we have to adjust from that's what we talked about just a second ago. The meeting room gives you that little bit of motivation ahead of time saying, hey, this weekend, here's what's coming up. This weekend, how would you prepare for this? So you, you absolutely have to don't stop the journey. Hold on to that feeling. You got to hold on to the feeling that I joined for a reason. I know why I joined. I talk about in this show all the time that you got to find your why. You've got to actually physically write it down. I'll share one other piece of advice for you. That's what I share with all of the new members who walk in. As I tell them my why, and I say, you got to find your own. And what I want you to do with your why is I want you, no kidding, I want you to grab a piece of paper. I want you to grab a pen or a pencil. I want you to physically write out your story to yourself. Why did you walk into the meeting room? Why did you get there? When you put it to pen and paper, something in the creative process in your brain is a little more significant than sitting for two seconds and thinking about it. You're forced to dig a little deeper than you would and you write it down. I don't want you to share it with anybody. What I want you to do is hang on to it. I want you to hang on to it in a sense where when you start losing 10 or 15 pounds, because we've proven the program works. At 10, 15 pounds down, you feel really good. Clothing, clothing sizes are now starting to change. Energy levels have picked up and complacency sets in. We like where we're at. That is the point in your journey. We you need to pick out your story. You need to read it because you need to know at this point, if you quit, that's what you get back. You get that story again. You get to add a sentence or two to that story. I don't want you to do that. Do I want you to read it off? And now just the opposite. You're going to hit roadblocks along, along the way. When you hit a roadblock and you say, you know, I can't do this. This is too hard. I, I think I'm going to quit. I want you to again go back and read that story because that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a new start date. You're going to get a new start date with the story you've just written. You're going to add a sentence to the bottom of it and say, this is my sixth time. I don't want you to do that. Now, I'll, I'll give you an analogy uh, that I always also use is if you have a college degree even if, or if you have a high school diploma, did you ace every single test along the way? I didn't, you know, I certainly didn't. Uh, so, so the test is the way in. The degree is lifetime. The diploma is lifetime. The test is your way in. You can fail a test or two along the way and still reach your goal. That's why you don't quit. You don't drop out of high school the first time you get a B minus on a paper. You don't drop out of med school the first day you, you, know, you don't pass the very first test. You stick with it. It's absolutely a hard journey. There's no question about it. But when you quit, you have to start over from square, run, square one. So I want you to think of it in that perspective. And lastly, what I want you to do, I want you to take photos along the way. I want you to love yourself enough where you document the journey because you can't see a 10 or 15 pound weight loss in your mirror. Your mirror has been lying to you your whole life. You go into your bathroom mirror at the morning before you get ready for work or the evening when you get ready for bed and you brush your teeth. The first thing we do is we look at our hair, we look at our eyes, we look at new wrinkles that have popped up in the day. We don't ever see our entire selves in our own mirror. You ever go to a department store, you ever walk through somewhere and you just catch a mirror that you weren't expecting and you look over and you say, who is that? Right, that's, that's what you look like. I want you to love that side of you. And I want you to take photos because that's what you really look like is in a real photo. And so when you then lose 5, 10, 15 pounds, you pull up a before photo that you took three weeks ago, four weeks ago, a month ago, you compare it to the most recent photo, and you absolutely can see a 10 or 15 pound weight loss in a photo side-by-side -side comparison. But you can't see them in your bathroom mirror. So those are tools that I want you to use along the way to keep you motivated. I want you to keep going on your journey you absolutely can get this done. So uh, don't start over. You have been given the tools that work. You've heard in this podcast and in many other podcasts ahead of time, there are people who've had significant numbers that have, they've done. All of them did it by not quitting. Last up, PJ writes in out of Rapid City, South Dakota. She says, I am 59 years old. 
I'm a lifetime Weight Watcher. In the mid-80s, I was over 300 pounds. I've been trying to get to my goal, uh, have an attractive figure forever. And after listening to your podcast, hearing you say that you believe in me, which made me cry because I haven't even believed in myself, and that you were my wingman, I've had the most motivated, determined, successful four days in a row. I am so determined that tonight we had T-bone steaks on the grill. I told my husband to cut off what he thought would be three ounces. He did. I weighed it. It came in at 4.5 ounces. He argued that I was being over the top with my measuring, and I said, no way. I'm doing it this time. Your encouragement has been so incredibly empowering. Thank you so much. You are so incredibly motivating for me. I'm a pro at beating myself up, and you're more of a pro at making me feel like I just might be okay. Well, PJ, um, you know why I believe in you, right? You absolutely know why I believe in you. I believe in you because when I started this journey, I, I was in the exact same place you were. I didn't believe in myself. I was hoping to lose 20, 30 pounds. I was hoping just to barely save my career and get by. I knew the program worked in that sense. I didn't at all think I could get to goal. And the folks on Connect, uh, the, the folks who supported my journey, they believed in me. They showed me that it was possible. Just like we've done all through this episode, we've showed you that it actually is possible. And so when you hear guys like Jeff, who've lost you know, 140 pounds and got to goal and maintained it, like last night you heard people who were at Lifetime for five years, they believe in you as well because they did it. So I believe in you because I know so many people who didn't believe in themselves who actually got it done. I now understand the part of this journey that every single person, every single person has the ability to do this. So that's why I believe you can do it because I know I'm confident every single person who wants to do this Every single person who said, tonight, I don't want four and a half ounces of steak. I want three ounces of steak. Someone who says that has the ability to get to goal. Because, because you know, if you look at a three ounce steak versus a four and a half ounce steak, you know, we, you know, you almost can't tell the difference on a plate. Your stomach almost can't tell the difference. With the exception of, it's probably a two extra two points. We've talked about today that, in other episodes, sorry, we've talked about where, um, the difference between maintaining your weight and losing your weight is really just about six points a day. In some cases, it's significantly less. So if you would have had that four and a half ounces, you can let your husband know this. If you would have had that four and a half ounces and you do that consistently throughout your journey, then you would, and you're going to be in what we, you know, what we commonly see on Connect as a plateau. And in reality, it's not a plateau. It's just you're not working the program. Now, there is a legitimate term as a plateau. It absolutely does exist, but it's been misidentified so often in our community. And, it, and what the common term is, is someone who's not tracking, not following the plan, you know, and they're having cheat days, cheat meals, and they refer to themselves as a plateau. I will give you credit for being on a plateau when you're following the plan 100% and not losing weight. That is your body adjusting. At that point, we need to figure out how to make some adjustments. But if you're not tracking, if you're eating four and a half ounces versus three ounces consistently, if you're grabbing an extra bite here, an extra bite there, that's not a plateau. That, that, is, that is you not working the program. But you now are doing just the opposite. I believe you can do this. You believe you can do this. And you, know, you can be a pro at some self-love. If you get to the point where you now accept every single thing about you, you accept your entire journey for exactly what it is. You love where you are today and you commit to making a change. And that commitment is that I'm going to continue weighing my steak. I st it's a practice I still do. My scale sits right next to the stove. I still weigh and measure everything. I still weigh and measure anything I eat for dinner if I'm eating at home because it's that important for me to maintain this. I do not have the ability with my eyeballs to look at a piece of steak and I can estimate portion size to the, with the best of them, but I still get it wrong. And the more you estimate, the more you, the size increases, increases, increases. So great job on your, on your commitment. The fact that you're, you know, just now starting this uh, and you're, you're absolutely committed means you can get it done. So PJ, thank you for your email. It's an honor to encourage you. 
Uh, I want to see you get to gold. There's nothing like stepping on the scale in the very last time in a weight loss mode. It is so incredibly different and it's so incredibly exciting. I, I wish I could give you that feel. I wish I could give you a taste of it because I guarantee you if you could taste it, you would get there. So you have to believe in me. You have to trust me that it's absolutely worth fighting for and you got to go after it. You got to get it done. When you get there, it's an incredible celebration of self-love. It's an incredible celebration of an accomplishment. It's things that you have not done your entire life until now. So I want to know what you're celebrating. I want you to share it. I want to go. I want you to go to fatdag.com. I want you to click on Listen Now. Send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. I want you to email in your celebrations because I absolutely want you to be proud of everything that you're doing and just like you heard in Jeff's email, Jeff didn't believe the program would work. He wasn't sure if he could stick with it. And by us sharing our stories, we gave him that hope. And I want you to help us inspire others. This is an amazing community. Thank you for being here. But that is going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has absolutely nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Woo! Do you remember when I started these episodes and they were like five minutes long? What happened to that? Right? They just go on and on and on. What do you think? Should I, um, Christine, thank you. Should I, um, what's the question I want to ask? Should I keep them this length or shorter? I mean, the fact that you guys are all still here kind of gives me some indication that you enjoy it, right? So I'm curious, shorter or longer episode? Well, I would say longer. I don't want to do longer. Um, well, cool. Let me, um, let me scroll up through some emails here and see, uh, it's not emails. Um, uh, let's see what I missed. Did you guys, did you guys check? Uh, you, this is, um, this is funny. This is getting harder and harder to do is to keep up with you guys. As you saw, I try and read them, but as you know, uh, as I, when I read them during the show, sometimes it makes me forget, um, for, makes me forget what I'm going to say. So Kirby, you can be a Weight Watcher professor. We'll we'll give you a PhD in um, what is it? The, what do we? I think I saw what is it? Class of ASAP? Is that what I saw? I'll have to scroll through in a second. I'll get there. I'm probably getting there. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. So difficult. So difficult to get. Not difficult, but just is a lot. You guys talk a lot, which is absolutely cool. Mm -hmm. I see we're talking about the app. I'm going backwards in here. So, um, whew, getting there. Um, man. So I may, uh, we may have to readjust at some point. Um, I like that comment. Someone said, I, I like to do the impossible. So that is absolutely cool. I'm almost there. Sorry, it's taking forever. Because I can only see like three comments at a time on an iPhone, right? So this is all being recorded on an iPhone. So um, I get three lines. And so I have to scroll every three comments. So think of all the comments you guys have written in, which is fantastic. And okay, so there we are. So water. So, so David bought his first small shirt. We talked about that. Uh, Andrea <clears throat> down 2.8 .8 at weigh in tonight. Um, yep, we saw that. Let's see here. I went too far. Um, so uh, let's see. Okay. Woohoo. Uh, Alicia grew up in southern Indiana, lives in Kentucky now. Very cool. Catherine made it. Good to see Catherine. Um, Let's see. So David, uh, sorry, Denise has a goal of an ultra running 50K. Leave me out of that one for sure. For sure. Lisa says you rock. Thank you. Um, yeah. 
So Araceli says you've been successful on sticking to the plan and not quitting, even though it's getting harder to almost go. No, it's not getting harder. I'm, I'm going to yell at you for a second. It's not getting harder. You're letting up off the gas. Really? Uh, trust me. Look at your tracker. Are you doing exactly what you did when you started? If you are, then then that's great. If you are, then let's readjust your points because maybe you, you truly are on a plateau. But most of us, when we think it gets harder as we get closer to goal, it's because we get complacent and, and that extra bite sneaks in. So um, go get it done, you know, really. Um, hello from Alaska, Stephen. Good to see you. Um, nine pounds. You can do it. You can do it. Um, you can do, Julie says you can do anything you set your mind to. Kathy says, love the t-shirt. I need that. So Kathy, it's not mine. I bought it. And, um, the podcast I did with the transformation coach, remember that one, Adam, I, I forget which podcast number it is, but it's my interview with the transformation coach. That's where I got it. It's his shirt. So he gave it to me. Yep. Um, all right. So here we, so obviously we talked about my PT test, right? what do you guys think of that piece? Right. That was kind of fun. Everyone said, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, wait a minute. He's talking about us. So, um, so very, very cool. Um, so let's see. Got all that. Kirby says he thinks I can get there but need a trainer. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, there is a, um, there is a legitimate physical limitation to that goal. Uh, it's not entirely mental. There's a lot of, there's a huge mental aspect to it, but there is also a physical limitation that I have to determine if that's true or not. Uh, and I don't know. So I'm going to just push real hard and see if I have that or not. Um, let's see. You guys are all very supportive there. So that's good stuff there. Uh, Angie's North Carolina. I got that. Um, Yeah, so Christine says, you know, emotional eater at times. You don't binge eat, but I reach for the wrong thing because it's stress or sadness. And it never cures it, does it? Right? No matter how sad or depressed or upset or angry I am, uh, eating makes the morning after uh, just as bad. So uh, you have to recognize that. I get it. it. You know, it's a true feeling. But you have to recognize that that's not going to solve anything. Um, yeah, so... Uh, so Nitha says, uh, you're jealous of my 713 mile. I agree. I, I thought that was crazy. Uh, I used to, my, I was a 12 minute mile guy for a long time. I mean, sometimes I couldn't even do that. You know, obviously when I started, I couldn't even run a quarter mile. So to not be able to run a quarter mile, to run, um, you know, a mile and a half in, in 11 minutes is pretty fun. Um, so Christine is going to reset. I like it. Um, yeah, Catherine can't wait to say I did it. That's those, you know, those words are pretty powerful. I did it. It's, it's incredibly powerful. So, um, oh, Christine, thank you for, uh, so you found me from Nokia. That was an awesome article that Nokia wrote. And I, I think we have some other surprises in store. I'm waiting to find out some details, but, um, I think that's going to be a fun journey for a little while. We'll, we'll let you know. Uh, Vonda, I appreciate you sharing the video. Very cool. Jeff rocks, 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 Jeff Okay. This is now the Jeff rocks show. I got it. Like. Very good, Jeff. Uh, yeah, Jeff is the man. You know, 140 pounds, you know, and it's not, it's not the number. It's, I mean, and I, I mean, 140 pounds is phenomenal. Don't, don't get me wrong there. I'm not discrediting at all the 140 pounds, but if you have 10 pounds to lose, uh, losing losing 10 pounds and losing 150 pounds is similar. It's all the mindset. Uh, now, one of them takes longer than the other, for sure. So one of them takes a little more focus than the other as far as, as, far as timeline goes. But if you both are in it for a lifetime, then it's really the same journey. Uh, so uh, great job, for sure. Um, just you keep, you keep that going. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, so more of the Jeff Rock show. I like that. Uh, Steven saying, what did he miss? Yeah, Steven missed uh, that Jeff lost 140 pounds and is rocking lifetime. Um, let's see. Uh, 
yes, uh, see, I'm sorry, because I'm scrolling through. Sadath, good to see you. Um, Denise uh, Marie is saying, knew it running and can't run for more than 90 seconds straight. So that's me totally. Uh, if you if you look through my my website, I don't know if it's completely documented, but uh, I could not run for 90 seconds. Not at all, uh, which is what put me in this mess. And now I ran a 11 minute mile and a half. So uh, it, it can be done. It, it, you know, it can be done. So Steve has a lot of steps today. Terry says your husband joined today. Awesome. Blue dot days. Perfect. So you so now you know you can do it. Right. Uh, keep it up. Steven has 14,249 uh, steps. How many points? How many steps do you guys think I have? Let's check. With a run, I have 6,700 steps. So I'm, a, I'm not a big step guy. Um, let's see. Nitha uses an app called Running. Cool. I might try that. Marie signed up for a 5K. Um... Yeah, so Christine, what do you feel about tracking sleep? So it's my weakness. Uh, I've read a lot of things. I've heard a lot of people talk about the number one thing you can do for your health is sleep. Man, I, I, I wish, I wish, I understand it. I get it. Um, I need to get better at getting more sleep. I don't get enough sleep. Here we are. Well, it's early tonight. I may get, I may actually get six hours of sleep tonight. That'd be kind of fun. Um, I do have Operation Fat Dag tomorrow. Pretty fun stuff. Um, let's see here. How do you track the foodie day? So Christine, we track it through an app that Weight Watchers, you have to, you, as a paid Weight Watcher member, uh, they give you an app and they give you all the tools to do it. It's very similar to MyFitnessPal, um, but I strongly believe that the Weight Watcher app is significantly better because of how they treat the sugar and the protein in food that MyFitnessPal doesn't. A 100 calorie cookie and a 100 calorie apple are not at all the same. If you're tracking strictly tracking calories, you will eat the 100 calorie cookie long before you eat the 100 calorie apple, and you'll never start to change those bad habits that that want you to have a cookie versus having an apple or a banana. So, uh, Christine, that's the answer to your question: is that um, the, uh, the the Weight Watcher app is what most of us are using to track what we're eating. Uh, so Mary Kay, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be your meeting. You know, I, I don't, my intent is not to replace your current meeting, uh, but I'm glad that you found it here. Um, yeah, so, yeah, you know, we, you know, overeating is a learned behavior. It really is. Um, all right, so that answered that. You guys are answering the questions for me, which is pretty cool, so... Um, well, thank you for that for Christine. Christine says she's been listening. So Christine is interested. Again, she, she found it from the Nokia blog. She didn't come here from Connect. And so now we need to educate her on the Weight Watchers side of things uh, and entice her to come to Weight Watchers. Not that any of us care, you know, in that sense, what program you use, but we just know that that's where we found the success. Uh, and, and it is incredibly easy to follow most of the time, and it does work um, for sure. Yeah, so good. You guys did a great job answering all that. So very cool. I'm going to skip all through all that um, and get see what else is uh Let's see. Man, you guys are fan. What an amazing. You know, I I, I want to look into like a, um, have you guys seen the the GoToMeeting app? Has anybody used that? I, I'm interesting if, interested to see if that would be a better place to host the podcast at night, the live version of it. Um, I think that meeting room may be a little more, because this is how you're using it. I'm not sure if Facebook is that best answer. I'll have to in, in look and invest in that uh, go to meeting site and see. I know it's expensive, though. Um, but it would be kind of fun to try it. Would you guys be willing to try it if I went to the go to meeting? Let's see. Um, all right, so here we are. Now we're talking about your Weight Watcher diploma. Yeah, and get your Weight Watcher master. So, the, so here we go. So your, your bachelor's is goal and your master's degree is lifetime. Is that how we do it? Or is your master's degree your one-year anniversary at Lifetime? There we go. Uh, Kirby's going to be a Weight Watcher professor. Yep, I got that. Um, so what do we say? Yeah, so the test, uh, you know, I, I kind of just made that up tonight, the test versus the degree. I actually had a conversation the other night, and I, and I thought of it, and I kind of elaborated tonight. 
Um, that's the hard part of that about the show is, is I take a few notes, but I really just whatever I think of, it just happens to come out. So if you ask me to redo the show, I, I couldn't do it. Uh, class of ASAP. I like it. Um, uh, <laughs> Stephen, yes, Stephen, you do have a bachelor's degree for sure. <laughs> um, Colleen, you can get there. Um, let's see here. Cool. Yvette said, wasn't going to listen tonight because you have been feeling down. Uh, but I'm so glad you did. Me too. You're so glad you did. I'm glad you did. Everything you t I talked about hit home. Perfect. That's why we do it. It's exactly why we do this. So, Charlotte, two nights in a row live. Good for you. Thank you for being here for sure. Um, yeah, never regret listening in. And I get it. You know, I mean, how long have we been rolling here? Probably about an hour, right? Because the show was 30 some minutes. And so, I get that you spent an hour with me at night, which is an incredibly long amount of time. Man, I'm I'm honored that you do that, really. I mean, uh, time is precious and valuable. Uh, the fact that you continue to tune in is the only reason I continue doing it. If you remember when I first started this, I didn't do them live. I just recorded them and, and pushed them out. But uh, you guys continue to tune in, and, and it's working for you. So I'm absolutely glad to do it. All right, Kirby, favorite comment of the night right here. Kirby Kirby said that Mike says the plateau is fake news. You know, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to beat anybody up when I talk about that, but but come on, if you're on a plateau for 5 or 6 months, it's not a plateau. It's just not I I, I mean, I've never, you know, so my entire weight loss journey, I didn't hit a plateau. It was a steady decrease week after week after week. So I don't have, a, you know, I can't really sympathize because I didn't experience a plateau. But but from what I know about the journey is, I mean, and Weight Watchers puts it in their own guidelines. A person following the program can expect to lose one to two pounds a week. Don't you think lawyers have, have written that term 18,000 times and figured out the best way to say it so they don't get their butt sued? Right? They didn't say it doesn't say members fall in the program might lose one to two pounds a week. Members fall in the program have 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 the ability potential could lose one to two pounds a week. It says members following the program can expect to lose one to two pounds a week. Look at the verbiage, and like I said there are there are lawyers sitting in a room talking about the exact verbiage, and they've determined that members who follow the program can expect to lose one to two pounds a week. And their, their out is, if someone says, oh, I'm not losing one or two pounds a week, then they're going to say, well, then you're not following the program. That's what the fallback will be. So if you're on a five, six, seven, eight-month plateau and, and you were to take them to court over it, let's just say, and you're, you know, I, this doesn't work, you're, you know, false advertising, they would fall back on the members working the program piece. I promise you that. So that's why, that's where I get my fake news. Sorry, a little rant there. Whew. Um, so, yep, Stephen and I agree on that. <laughs> Steaks on a stove, snakes on a plane. Um, let's see. All right. Mm -hmm. So Jeff said the biggest thing that's helped him along the way is learn what his food triggers are. That is absolutely key. Figure out your food triggers and then your emotional triggers if, you have, if you're an emotional leader. If you can figure them out and then recognize them, you have a much better chance of, of resisting them when they uh, come on. Stephen Cross, good to see you, sir. Uh, great job. Great chat today. I appreciate chatting with you and, uh, and getting you pointed in the right direction. So keep, keep up a great job. Um, so my – no, no, I so, thought – if you were making fun of me for cooking steaks on the stove, then no, I don't cook steaks on the stove. My steaks are cooked on the grill. My scale sits next to my stove for sure. Uh, Christine says she took notes. Thank you for that. Very cool. You guys are all welcome. Steven here. Very cool. Charlotte, her scale's batteries died. Okay, I know where they sell batteries. I think we can fix. That's an easy fix. Um... All right, so okay, so you guys like this length of the show best, yeah. So jo uh, Johanna says some long, some short. I agree with that. Um, five minute before Facebook Live, and then your emails, okay. 
And then this, this, you know, it's funny, you, we're never going to have, we're never all going to agree, right? How fun would that be? Um, yeah, so Liz Kirby sent me an email. He recorded the show all on his own, just sent it to me. I had no idea it was coming in the inbox. Uh, and when it came in, it was a must play for sure. Um, let's see. Lenny says longer shows are fine. You like talking. <laughs> yeah, Stephen, I do like talking, man. You know what? It's funny. It's not that I like talking, which is, I do, but it's not that. What it is is um, I, I want you to reach goal. And I know you are, right? but I want everyone to reach goal. Uh, and if this works, then great. Yeah, no honorary degrees in the school of ASAP. We got to we got to come up with a better term than um, the school of ASAP. I, I'm not not necessarily against that one, but there's a better degree we can come up with. Um, Charlotte's asking, "Have I ever heard of Kim and Kelly? Their sisters on YouTube do the skinny on weight loss." Nope, have not. I'll have to check them out. Uh, Willa. Good to see you, too. Thank you for being here. Uh, do I have an iPad? Yes, I do. Um, you can be recording on your iPhone and keeping up with comments on your iPad. I, so I tried that before, Liz, and so what happens is the comments weren't syncing properly. And so, because I did try it, because I have a computer right here, and I have an iPad right there, and then I have the you know the show back there. I've tried doing that where I get the comments on a different app, and... Maybe I'll experiment with it tomorrow night. We'll try that. Um, let's see. <laughs> Paula, yes, my my food scale sits next to the stove. My my Nokia uh, scale sits next to the shower. So um, that's <laughs> that's how that works. So in the morning I weigh me. In the evening I weigh my dinner. So that's funny. Um, Let's see. So there Christine is again. Uh, so Christine, thank you again for being here. Very cool. Yeah, walking is just as good. So Christine, there are episodes that you should be listening to about attendance goals versus, versus performance goals. I would rather you walk every single day than you run once a week. Uh, I want you to build the healthy habit of doing something daily so that you have a habit of doing that uh, and then continue doing that. So um, and elliptical's good. Uh, so Willa, how do you stay motivated to exercise? Again, you do as little as possible so that you can do it every day. Excuse me. You do as little as possible so that you can do it every day. And you build a habit of going every single day. That's how you do it. Um, so Jeff's saying everyone rocks. So we're back to the Jeff Rocks show. You're, uh, so here we go. Um, I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Jeff Rocks. That's how we'll do the next show. Uh, my Jeff's weight loss journey failed when Jeff focused on how. It wasn't until Jeff switched his focus to why that Jeff truly transformed himself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com. Follow along on jeffrocks.com. Um, sorry. little tangent there for Jeff. Uh, so Nitha says, Fitbit went to Fitbit heaven. New Fitbit arrives later. So I've, uh, I've, adopt, or I've gotten rid of Fitbits for that reason. No offense to the Fitbit guys, but I went through a couple of them and then just gave up. Uh, so I now I'm I'm a Nokia guy. Helps when they send it to you, uh, but still I'm a Nokia guy at this point for my steps. I use my Garmin for my runs. I like my Garmin for the run. I like my Nokia for the steps. Um, all points are not equal. That's entirely true. Um, and you guys are awesome. So we're talking about Fitbits, Fitbit Charge HR, Charge 2s. <laughs> um, yes, Facebook saves, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so Facebook saves the video. You're right, because that saved me last night because last night the audio didn't record properly. And if it wasn't for the Facebook video, I would not have had a show yesterday. Hmm. Kirby, I will follow you anywhere as well. Some feeling of mutual, my friend, for sure. Um I think, Amy, I think um, there are there is a paid version of GoToMeeting that does record the meeting um, and makes it available. I looked into it a while ago. Um, I'll look at it. We'll see. Um, 
Yeah, Debbie's exactly explaining the the performance. Or sorry, the the attendance goal versus the uh, yeah. So I mean, I have so I have the monster iPad, right? I mean, I wonder if I don't know, but um, you know what? That's a great call there, Nita. I should do my Facebook Live from the iPad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great. So thank you for that because I will switch to that. Um, the reason I don't is because of my um, the tripod that I use obviously holds the phone better. So I will figure out something. Give me a couple days to figure that out. And yes, that's exactly right. So um, yeah, so you download the show into your app. So go to the app store, learn, search for Wise Advice, download the app, and you can download the while you're when you're connected to Wi-Fi, you download the shows into your phone. You listen to them, you delete them off your phone. They're always available on the internet, but that way you can take just the episode you want without having to use your data off your cell plan. Yep, so that's exactly what Kirby's explaining, so good job. So Kirby's saying, Fat Dag, preach. I forget what I was preaching about. Probably a plateau, right? Um, very cool. Um, yeah, so Angie's validating that the blue dots are key. Um, very cool. Yes, tomorrow is an Operation Fat Dag, so I'll go talk to the Army tomorrow. That'll be fun. Um, yep, so Charlotte has a mini scale. Very cool. I always thought about getting one taken to restaurants, but um, I don't know. Class of ASAP. Hmm. Working on it. School of Sustainability. Okay. We'll think of one. We'll think of one. What are those... Um, that's what we're going to make. We're going to make some college t-shirts. Right? That would be fun, though. Uh, yeah, so you can't really use Weight Watchers. I'm sure they would not be happy with me using their name. A school of Hard Bods. Yeah, I like that. All right, Neith is out. Good night. Um, okay. Dun, dun, dun. So you guys are all work. Um you do your whole show in the third person what are you saying would i do would i do my whole show and i understand the third person concept but give me an example of what you mean um phd in lifetime mathematics i can't talk like the rock i saw you do it can you smell what the rock is cooking um you're awesome Nita's awesome yeah the fat dag does not eat points he does not have uh, yes, yeah, so I know they smell, they smell, they sell small scales that fit in your pocket. Um, yeah, good. Yeah, and as long as they're not, yeah, don't have magnets, geez. Um, and of course, if you guys were here, you know that's how that started, right? You guys asked for it. I'm like, well, I'll, I'll buy them if you guys want them. Um, they, I can't, they're not on my website anymore. I gotta, I had to take them down. I will move. I guess I'll put it on Facebook, I guess. If you go to Facebook, there's an old post about magnets probably two or three weeks ago. Um, it's just a little magnet that says when you're out of points. Hang on. That. But it's backwards for you guys, right? Um... Yeah, you got to go to Facebook to find it, and you got to scroll down. I apologize. Look for this in Facebook. Um, so, cool. Ah, uh, oh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Well, that is the bottom of the Facebook Messenger comments. So, uh, it is now 11 o'clock on the East Coast. We are, school is out of session. It's a magnet. It sticks to mag metal things. I don't have anything metal. Um, Christine's asking, what do I think about the, the Weight Watcher prepared foods from the stores? Um, it's not about the food. This, this journey has nothing to do with about the food. So uh, I'm not a food hack guy. There are people who've done well with that version of it. 
I eat the real deal of everything. I just go through portion control. And then if I get hungry, I figure out why I get hungry and I get rid of things that don't fill me up naturally. So, it, you know, if, if I, but I'm not, I'm not going to substitute for fake food. You know, I don't do fake news. I don't do fake food. Um, I want to be able to walk into any restaurant and be able to order off the menu and, and, and be able to, to sustain this for a lifetime. So that's my, that's my deal on prepared food, prepackaged food. Um, not to say it doesn't work. It's just not how I'm working the program. Again, the beauty is there's so many different ways to be successful. You find what works for you. You find what you can sustain and you get it done. So speaking of that, you have the ability to get this done more than anything. You can do it. If you heard, you, you know, we, we call this show Jeff Rocks. That's probably going to be the show title is Jeff Rocks. We're just going to call it that. So good, good on you, Jeff. Um, but episode 85, Jeff Rocks, is, um, is an honor for me to, to share with you uh, to make sure that you can reach your goals. So Christine, for sure. Christine, uh, probably a good thing if you're brand new to this whole process, Christine, shoot me a Facebook Messenger message if you'd like or shoot me an email at onair at fatdag.com i'd love to chat with you a little bit just to kind of get you because you don't come from the connect community so a lot of what we talk about is foreign and i'm actually very interested in um and in helping you specifically because one of the things i'm trying to figure out is as with this podcast reaches people who weren't exactly following the weight watcher plan i'm trying to figure out a way to best help you so you being the first one that i know of uh, I would love to, to to work with you a little bit more. Not gonna, I'm not a money guy, so don't need anything for it. I want to just help you to get you on the right track. So shoot me a Facebook Messenger, um, and I'd be glad to to work with you for sure. But uh, more than anything, this takes focus. It takes discipline. You have the ability to get this done. I want you to get to goal. I want you to maintain your goal because I know you're going to enjoy it as much as I am. So with that. Uh, I wish you from the bottom of my heart, more than anything, I wish you absolutely the best focus there is. Have a great night.